Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to do a longer, slow edit of a an image here, and we're going to do one which is HDR, and you'll see why in a moment. So we start off by going to File, New HDR Merge, and here we want to add the files. And the picture, if I look at this one here, is of directly into the sun because I've got a nice lines coming out from this seat here and because it's into the sun there's a really wide dynamic range this dark shadow and light as well so i went from minus two to minus four to this is the standard one you would have taken but see a lot of the sky burnt out but then some lighter and lighter ones to get in the detail for example in the grass here Generally speaking, it's pretty difficult doing HDR when you've got a place with plants in. And that's because you're going to get the movement of the plants, and so the separate photograph's going to look different. So you've got to be careful and look for things. It wasn't too bad here, but it's, there's, it's often a good idea to go in and see what you can fix before you move further on. So anyway, I'm going to say open all these. So I click on one, then shift click on the other. So I've got five selected, and open that. And then these will turn up in here. There we go. Now then, what do these do I want? Automatically alignment images. Don't need that because I was on a tripod, so it's not moving. The automatically remove ghosts. Don't need that because, again, I haven't got people walking through the scene. Noise reduction. I'd like to do that myself. And tone mapping. Yes, I'll do that myself as well. So all the kind of classic HDR stuff. So we'll do that. So it shows you here bringing in the pictures and it then it merges them together. There you go, that's quite quick. You, you get the pictures up here. I'm not going to worry about those at the moment. But here's the picture, first picture you come to with this. It hasn't been treated, which is why it looks a little bit odd, but the information is in there. In particular, if I go up to document and convert format here, you can see the actual format format it's in is RGB 32. This is a 32-bit image, so there's lots of information we can use here. One of the things you notice here as well with HDR is that there's some little spots of light here. In other words, these are ones which burned through anyway. So you might want to get rid of some of these. So if I go down here to the in painting brush here and just quickly stroke on those. I'll just do some of these. You can tap and move on and it'll just move things in from around it. Zoom back out again, control zero to look for ones which are standing out. There's one. And if it doesn't look quite right, give a little bit more of a stroke on it again. And in grass, in painting is generally pretty easy. Let's double check the way it does things. Go back out again. Anything standing out? There's one there. Look at what happens to it. Yeah, that's okay. You can just do it again on top if there's something standing out. Anything more here? We've got the main ones here, haven't we? There's a couple down here. Holding down the control key and rolling the mouse wheel to zoom. Okay, now let's go in and look further up here. So up here, as we move, zoom in here, look, there's some dust spots here. So to get rid of dust spots or to make them more visible, go to Live Filters and Unsharp Mask and just turn up the top two controls. And now we can see them far more clearly. To use the In Painting tool again here, I'm going to make sure that I've got the pixel selected, otherwise it'll look like nothing's happening. And then I just go around these. Again, if it's not doing it fully enough, or you can right square bracket to make it a little bit bigger when I'm for this. And just tap over these. These are ones which are very light, you probably wouldn't see anyway, but we'll We'll just go through over some of these to 
And again, in skies, it's very easy to... Oh, there's a good one. It's very easy to, to get rid of the spots because they, they really don't show up when you take off that extreme sharpening. Yeah, oops. Went a bit too far there. There we go. A few more over here. And just tapping on them. Control zero back out again. There we go. Something else I noticed in here, there's a little bit of a glitch there, so just something behind it. Zoom in a bit. If I click that with the in painting brush, there you go. That's tied it up quite nicely. Also, when we're looking in here, now look at this here. You can see we've got some different colours around the outside here. This is chromatic aberration. You can get this particularly because you're combining it in a in an image. So I go to the unsharp mask there, take that off. See, it's not so clear here. So let's leave it on for the moment so I can see that. Go to this layer here. First of all, I'll go to Filters, Colours and Chromatic Aberration and see what that does to reduce those colours. It's caused by the lens at extreme levels. Okay, that's, that's improved that a lot, hasn't it? By the time we take off the unsharp mask there, that's pretty strong there. What you just begin to see as well here, there's some effect in here. Let's, let's try something else with this. Go to Filters, Colours and Defringe. And then when we click on one of the colours here, see it, it decides to move this to that colour. And then turn down the bottom one. And if you're going to get anywhere, see those, there's some point at which those are going to get darker. Try also remove complementary hues. That doesn't always work too well, but that's doing a little bit here. But remember, we've got this, this sharpening on top, the extreme sharpening, so this is standing out. And we are zoomed right into pixel level here, so maybe that's not too bad. Let's look around the edges here. There's a bit of burn there, but that's from the sun. That's OK. I think that's all right. Right, there's something else I was noticing around. I was flashing around there. We've got any other effects in here, because sometimes you get in this, like you've got some more of that there, but maybe it's, this is not so. Then I'll, I'll leave that, I won't keep going on that. Sometimes you get some very funny effects during HDR, which you, you can do, can address. I'm just looking to see if there's any in these areas here. It's often in the detail areas. I think it's okay. But if necessary, you can put on a blur of 0.1 pixels just to take the edge off any sort of hard crunchiness you're getting in there. Okay, I don't think we need that unsharp mark, mask anymore. Let's turn that off. Let's straighten the picture as well. It's not quite straight, is it? So we'll do a basic crop. The colour I know is rubbish. We're going to work on that in a minute. So I'll go to the crop tool here. Zoom in a little bit to this because I'm going to go to the straighten tool and just drag along the edge of that bench there. We use that as a straight edge. It may not necessarily be so, but then control zero back out again. Come in, there's a bit of a building there. We don't need that in there. So we'll bring him coming beyond that. What also is nice is have the sun central. So I'll bring in the edge here as well. Just enough so we're keeping that the whole tree in there. Because if you're going to crop the tree, you to get into the middle of it, or but just don't crop right the very edge of it. So get the central sun there. Then do we need to bring the bottom up? We want those lines out there, but let's bring it up to somewhere like here. Then apply that there. Okay. So now we're going to do something about the colour. And the one thing we're going to do is you can use the tone mapping. So I'm going to go to this here, because tone map will, will destroy this. So I'm going to hit Control j to duplicate it. And then we'll do that top layer. So the bottom layer is there if we need to go back and maybe blend it in or something like that. So up here is tone mapping. And with this, it'll give you some options. 
which can look pretty extreme, some of them. There we go, control zero, then brings that in here. And that's the basic one. You can look at other ones here and there's drop down here, some other sets. In here, don't go too mad with this. Got on here, that's kind of interesting. Let's, let's look at what is, is being done there. And the options down here, let's bring this down a little bit so we can see more. The detail refinement is on, so radius and, and amounts. In other words, it's kind of sharpened a bit. So let's have a look at that. Is that, how, how's that sharpening? Is that okay? That's not too bad, really. But however, it's a bit saturated because it's turned the saturation up here. So I'm going to bring that saturation down a bit. I don't like it too, with too much colour in. So round about, yeah, it's going to be zero. So I've rolled the mouse wheel here. I can actually hover over that. And then I've got that into down to zero. And what it does as well with this one is it's turned the local contrast halfway up and the tone compression fully up. Tone compression is great because it pulls in the scrum things, but all this histogram here, look at the length of that. But let's not worry about that for now. And local contrast. I'll uh, just see that. If you go more, it gets very crunchy. If you go down, it gets softer. Actually, it's not bad, sort of middle one there. So we've just turned that down a bit. Okay. Let's go with that. So I'll apply that. Okay. So what more can we do here? Um, maybe let's have a little bit of a look at the colour. Again, look at the vibrance. So you can just turn up the vibrance, which just makes more saturated the areas which are less saturated. So just a little bit of that brings a bit a bit more colour into it, but without kind of overdoing it, which you get for it if you use just saturation. Okay, that's that's something. Um, what else can we do? Uh, let, let's have a look. You could actually take it as is, but let's try some more experiments now. So I, I'll get to a picture like this and I'll I'll save it. And then I'll go, let's try some different things again. So what am I going to do here? Let's do a... Let's try look at look, making this a... I could put a bit of glow onto it. A couple of ways to do this. One's a more traditional way, another's a not so traditional one. But so the standard one is to use a live Gaussian blur, turn this up to blur it a bit so you can still see the detail, and then change the blend mode there to soft light. Or maybe looks a bit too much contrast added, maybe just go to screen. So you've got this glow effect and then you'd adjust the opacity to suit typically about halfway here. But I'm also going to show you another one here, so I'm going to take that off for a moment. Less common one is to go down here, Live Filters, and go to the Lens Blur. So this does a whole th number of things about pretending that you've got numbers of blades in your your camera and so on, and the bloom, etc. But leaving the rest of these around, just play with the radius, if I turn this up, with, with blurs often as well, if you get something, turn things up, you get funny things at the edge, it's often a good idea just to get preserve alpha. But look at this, the way it does it. So if I go there, that's the something that's, you've got the shape of things. If I turn that off, and turn on the Gaussian blur, turn the Gaussian blur, put on back this one, there's a little bit of difference there. Lens blur actually is often an easier one to use. So it's something you can use if you want to try doing something different. Let's just lose it this time. So I'll turn off that, turn the lens blur, and we can also play with these, see if this makes a difference to what we're seeing. You often don't see too much unless you're zoomed right in on this, I think. That's not appearing much. So what we'll do then is go to the blend mode, put that down to screen and turn the opacity down a bit so we've got something of a less effect but just that slight glow to it. 
And one more thing we'll try. Actually, we'll go up here, we'll go to layer and new on top. So that goes on here. By the way, these things are appearing all on top of one another because when I go to the assistant manager here, I've got this down here. I've got a set to add adjustment as new layer and add filter as new layer, I suppose, so as child layers. And change the blend mode of that to soft light. So that's white as a soft light. So you could get a high key effect like this. You can also put in some colour. So if I go up here to change this, and if I take the bottom one all the way down and the middle one into the middle, I got very orange. But I want to keep that sort of orange colour, but make it lighter here. If I hold down the shift key, just drag the bottom one, see it's keeping them in proportion. So I can change this up to a lighter orange effect, but then I can change these again. So maybe turn the the red down. If you turn the red all the way down, it's going to go cyan because you're taking red out. So you've just got the green and blue, which is giving you the cyan. And maybe the green, may I add a little bit more green to that because we've got a lot of green in the picture just to kind of emphasize that. Make this a little bit more yellow. Maybe put the red up a bit again. There we go. And again, this is a bit on the strong side, so we can turn the opacity down here. So there we go. There's another different effect just by adding these areas here. So just those top two, take those off. There's one picture and there's another picture. Finally, let's try a completely different kind of like more abstract approach. I'm going to take a crop tool here and I crop in on something sort of different, which I sort of found playing around practicing for this. I'm going to go here and here. So you've got the middle here. And then I'm going to bring this in to the round about the top of the bush there. And then bring this in here enough so it's gone past the tree there taking that tree out but keeping this here I want to put this over the middle of the sun put that over the sun there and there's a little bit of a building here so I'm going to take that up a little bit just to take that out and then we're going to apply that so there isn't that quite an interesting picture interesting effect you could print that or show that different very letterbox very much this dominant feel but you've got these edges which also gives you context as to the sort of place it is. Anyway, that's it, and thank you very much for watching.